Okay, well, let's talk about the gravita and para. And I'm just going to touch on the basics, and then we're going to use a lot of examples to kind of drive the point home. So the gravita is going to be simply the number of pregnancies that the woman has had in her lifetime. So if she's currently pregnant, if she's had prior pregnancies, those will be counted. So the number of times that the sperm and the egg have met to form a viable product is what we are looking for. The para, on the other hand, uh, is going to be everything else. The number of living children, the number of abortions, preterms, and terms, uh, there's a couple different ways to write this out, and I'll try and touch on both. Uh, but the subset of para is going to be TPAL. So para may be broken down into TPAL, or para can simply just be para by itself, and then also noted the number of abortions. So T is the number of term pregnancies, P is the number of preterm pregnancies, uh, A is abortions, miscarriages, ectopics, uh, any failed pregnancies for the most part, and then L is going to be number of living children currently. So, like I said, let's start off with an example. Uh, for this, a woman comes to the obstetrician 16 weeks pregnant. How do you calculate her G's and P's? And then also, I'm just going to throw in the rest of her history is negative, she has no current living children, uh, no other prior pregnancies. So, let's figure out her G's and let's figure out her P's. So for P's, we can either just say para by itself or we can break it down into T, P, A, and L. Now for this one, uh, I'm going to break it down, for the next one maybe not. So the gravita, how many pregnancies has she had total? Well. We know that she hasn't had any prior to this, but she is currently pregnant, so she has one pregnancy. Uh, her term, how many term pregnancies, pregnancies has she had? Well, she hasn't come to term yet, so it would be zero. How many preterm babies has she delivered? Zero. Number of abortions? Zero. Number of living? Zero. So it could either be written out T0, P0, A0, L0, or it could just simply be put P0. So G1P0 is a pregnant woman for the very first time. Has not delivered yet. Okay, so let's clear that off and move to the next one. This is a little harder of an example. And then by the end, hopefully you'll be pros and you'll be able to do this even with the hardest example that I have. So uh, a woman comes to, to your office. She brings her only two children, ages 6 and 14. Uh, both were born at 40 weeks. Now I'm just going to highlight this because I didn't didn't tell you what the difference between a preterm and a full term. Or simply put, term pregnancy. Uh, a preterm is going to be less than 37 weeks. Full term, on the other hand, is going to be 37 or more weeks. So that's that's kind of the difference here. So we've got two living children, two living. Um, she has a positive HCG pregnancy test, meaning she is pregnant right now as you see her. So she's got one pregnant now. So let's figure out her G's and her P's. Now her G is going to be, she's had two term pregnancies. She's had two pregnancies so far, and now she's pregnant again. So it should be G3. She's had three total pregnancies. She hasn't had any failed ectopics, abortions, anything else. Um, her para is going to be broken down into T, P, A, and L. How many term pregnancy pregnancies has she had? Well, she's had two. Both were born at 40 weeks. 40 is above 37, so they're full-term pregnancies, so T2. So para um, is going to be term 2, preterm 0. She hasn't had any abortions, and she's got two living. So uh, it could be written out just like this, or you would simply put para 2. So G3, P2, um, and then that should give you a good idea of what we're talking about and you just work backwards for the most part. Alright, so let's clear this and hopefully you're ready for a little bit harder of one. Now we're kind of into the moderate difficulty range. So you've got a 37 year old comes to your clinic 
four month history of missed periods. So you're thinking maybe she's pregnant. A quantitative HCG reveals levels indicative of pregnancy. So yes, she is pregnant right now as you are questioning her. She reveals that she has three living children. The oldest was delivered at 39 weeks, 36 weeks for the middle one, and the youngest at 38 weeks. So I'm just gonna highlight this one. The middle one was born preterm. 36 is less than 37. So this one is born preterm. These two were born at term. She's currently pregnant right now. So she's got three live children, one current pregnancy. So let's figure out her G's and P's. G, P. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to write out the T P A L. Um, I'll just I'll just speak through it. So, how many pregnancies has she had total? Uh, she has had one, two, three prior children, and she's currently pregnant now, so it would be a gravita of four. Her para, on the other hand, is going to be three. Now you can break this down because she's had no no uh, abortions, no miscarriages or the sort. Um, so you could break it down into T, P, A, L. Um, the T would be two because she's had one, two term pregnancies. The P for preterm would be one because she's had one preterm child. A, zero because she hasn't had any abortions and live children. L would be three. So uh, hopefully, hopefully you're able to follow that. But now we're going to move on to an even more difficult one. So this one I saved for the end because it'll make you think. Now let's take a look. A 35 year old woman presents one week post laparoscopy after a confirmed ectopic pregnancy was discovered, the contents were removed. So she's had one ectopic. History reveals recurrent ectopic pregnancies, four more ectopics that were noted in the chart. So four more. Um, she has three living children. So three live one born at 35 weeks, and twins born at 38. So 2x will stand for twins, so 2 at 38. So in total we have five ectopic, a singleton born at 35 weeks, and twins born at 38 weeks. Let's figure out her G's and her P's. All right, so this is a good one to make you think. So what are we dealing with? The G, the gravita, stands for the number of pregnancies. So she has had one ectopic plus four more, so that's five total pregnancies, plus a singleton, plus twins. So how are we gonna deal with twins? I put twins in there because it'll make you think. How many times was she pregnant with twins? Was she pregnant two times to deliver each child? No, she was only pregnant once. So this only counts as one pregnancy. So she has five ectopic plus two pregnancies to, live, to deliver her children for a total of G7. How many term pregnancies does she have? Well, she's only had one that actually went to 38 weeks. So the twins only count as one pregnancy. There are two children, but one pregnancy. So T1, how many preterms? Only one pregnancy that made it to 35 weeks. So P1, abortions, ectopics, miscarriages, etc. cetera. Uh, how many is that? Well, we know that she had the one that she just had, plus four more would be five. And lastly, how many living children does she have? She has the one singleton, and then the two, uh, I guess the twins, and that would be a total of three living children so far. So I would report this as G7, T1, P1, A5, L3. So this one makes you think a little bit because we have this, this kind of curveball twins thrown into the factor. Uh, so really you have to kind of slow it down a little, think how many pregnancies does she have? doesn't matter how many children she has, she could have a whole bunch of twins. But remember, each time she delivers a set of twins, it's only one pregnancy. So hopefully you found this video useful. 
Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Otherwise, I always appreciate comments. Please subscribe for more videos and like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.